Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nisha and I am a registered nurse turned stay at home mom who obviously has Hashimoto's. And this guy over here is my husband, but he's also my primary care physician. And today is a huge deal because we're gonna be going over my labs, my thyroid labs, cholesterol, like a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, if you're new here and you haven't been following me on other things, you may or may not know that in January, I took myself off of my desiccated thyroid medicine. Against her doctor's advice. <laughs> Actually, without her doctor's knowledge. Yeah, don't do that. This was a N equals one experiment that I chose to do. Alone. Alone, on my own. And uh, we're gonna see how that went for me. Also, I am ketovore, which means I'm mostly meat-based, but I eat some veg every now and then but not very much. I don't eat any fruit or anything like that. No sugar, no starches, no grains, no seed oils, no stuff like that. And so that is how I've been treating my Hashimoto's right now, just with food and diet and, and some supplements as well. Yeah. So we're just going to go ahead, go ahead and get into it because I'm pretty excited because they're not bad. They could be better, but they're not bad. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is TPO antibodies and the thyroid globulin antibodies because that's kind of the main Hashimoto's trackers. I had my labs done through Quest and every lab is different with their ranges. Quest says less than nine, but LabCorp and most others says under 35. For TPO. For TPO antibodies. Yeah. So what were my results, Dr. Gray? So your thyroglobulin antibodies, TG antibodies, were less than one. So back to baseline normal. <clears throat> That's optimal, yeah. Yeah, you can't get any better than that. And your TPO antibodies were 43. Right. And what were they last time you checked them before? When you... I was pregnant and on medications, they were 18. So they were really good while I was pregnant and on medications. And for reference, if you don't know anything about Hashimoto's, most people's antibodies, even if they are on a thyroid medication, are somewhere in the range of 500 to 1,800. Yeah. They're very, very high. When you were first diagnosed? They were around 500. 500, yeah. yeah. And a, a lot of primary care doctors especially, and even endocrinologists, will say that you only check the antibodies one time. Yep. That you, you don't use them to track the severity of the disease. And I think that's absolutely untrue there's no research proving one way or the other but without exception every person with Hashimoto's we've talked to felt better when their antibodies were at the lowest point and and so obviously with with the lowest point being normal it stands to reason that the lower your antibodies are the better you feel right and we don't <clears> just <throat> go by antibody numbers or you shouldn't you should go by your symptoms yes. so in addition to my antibodies being 43, which is not normal, but is low for Hashimoto's and yeah. me not taking medication. Also, all my symptoms are fine. Like all of my brain fog and pain and extreme fatigue and all of those things that come along with Hashimoto's, if you wanna watch the video where I talk oh. about all of my symptoms that I had, I'll link it over here. Um, and if you wanna hear about my journey and all that stuff, I'll link that video too as well. So a lot of the websites and blogs and stuff, when you look up, they say that remission is under 35, which is normal labs, but more common you see under 100 being remission with the added bonus of that your symptoms are gone yeah. and you're able to live your life the way that you should be. And many doctors fall into the trap of just looking at the black and white numbers and ignoring your symptoms. And you need to never let that happen. If the lab says that you're perfectly fine, but your symptoms are severe, don't don't take that as the final diagnosis that you're fine. It's all in your head. Um, and so we always use the numbers as reference and we always look at them and think about them, but we never blindly just say, well, this is this, therefore this. Right, because when we first, when I first started feeling bad and I was feeling really, really bad and having all these symptoms technically, my labs were normal. And as my disease progressed, I got higher and higher until I actually changed the way that I ate and was taking the thyroid medication. I know a lot of people take levothyroxine and there's NP and W, what is WP. It? WP and Nature Throid yeah. and Urfa. Um, and Urfa. There's several different kinds of medication people can be on. I was on Nature Throid and then I think I switched to NP. 
yeah. for a while. Because there was a shortage. Right. Yeah. And so let's talk about the rest of your labs. Okay. Blood, your blood sugar was 85, which is completely right in the middle of normal. Your kidney function was beautiful. Your creatinine, and you're a ketovore. Right. So lots of meat, a little bit of veg. A lot of, a lot of meat. Yeah, and your creatinine was actually low, which right. is very, very good. That means that all the meat you're eating is not affecting your kidneys in any negative way whatsoever, which is very good. Uh, your electrolytes, stone cold normal your albumin, globulin, uh, any signs of malnutrition, you, you are getting more than enough nutrition from your diet. Uh, your liver labs are completely normal. You never have really had any problem. No, no. With, even at your worst, but I don't a, think. A lot of people still think that eating a lot of right. fats. <clears throat> right, and you're gonna put these up on the screen yeah, so they yeah, can say, okay. Yeah. So completely normal kidney and liver function, even though she's eating pounds of meat a day. And a lot of eggs. A lot of eggs, yeah, a lot of eggs. And so we we had a serum plasma iodine checked, and uh, sometimes this can it can fluctuate wildly over the course of the day, and depending on your diet. These are fasting labs. By these the are way. all fasting, and your um, iodine level was fifty, which is just a smidge below the normal uh, level. Which for who's this quest? Yeah, mm -hmm. their range is fifty two to one hundred nine micrograms per liter. And you, so you're two points low under that. Right. And I have actually been taking iodine drops, but I put them in my coffee and I'm notoriously famous for not finishing my coffee. She's a sipper. Yeah. And so I could probably step up my iodine game. And also right. I've started integrating seafood into my week. So scallops, mahi mahi. Uh, Pila Manitum shrimp, oysters, if oysters never go anywhere. scallops, those type of things. I'm starting to integrate those more instead of just red meat and chicken, which is kind of what I was doing before. Okay, and then um, your total glutathione, which is a little extra lab. A lot of doctors won't even order that. Uh, the range is 544 to 1228, and yours is 406, a little bit low. And uh, the glutathione is a very important uh, molecule in the human body. There are multiple things that can make it go be low or be high. And uh, very common things that can make it be low are lack of sleep. <laughs> so if you're new here, I have a 10 month old, he'll be 11 months old this month and he is a breastfed baby and he nurses during the night. So I very rarely get more than two, maybe two and a half hours of sleep without being woke up. So my sleep cycle is like all over the place. If you're a mom, you know, so. Yeah. Another thing that can cause low glutathione is lack of exercise which i've also started doing and um although, stop doing you stopped lack of exercise okay well i but since i've had these labs done yeah. i have started and I, he is like i said my primary care but i did go to a functional medicine nurse practitioner to have these labs done and also just to get another perspective and so after i have my next visit with her i'll do another video and follow up and see what she says as well and see if she agrees with Dr. Berry. When I went in, she was very impressed that all my symptoms were gone. And she does AIP, which is the autoimmune protocol. I never tried that. I just skipped right over all that and went to keto, ketovore. And it's what worked for me. But that's what she goes by. But she was like, I can't argue with your results. So she's very open to yeah. looking into <clears throat> this way of eating for Hashimoto's. Yeah, it's always a really good sign for a healthcare provider if they really are interested in your symptoms and actually take your symptoms into account. Another thing that can make your glutathione low is um, chronic stress, like being in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> and, and economic collapse and a new baby and yeah. So we'll, we'll recheck that in three to six months. Yeah, so. I'm going to keep rechecking these and doing updating updated videos and just like this one because I feel like there's a lack of hard, concrete evidence on, well, anywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, blogs. Uh, very rarely are people coming on and being like, here are my numbers. This is what I'm doing and this is how I got there. So I really want to provide that because I feel yep. like no one is really. No, I think And if there right. are, please... Let me know in the comments because I'd love to watch those videos. So next is your complete blood count, your CBC, and it's all stone cold normal except your white blood cell count was a few tenths of a point low. 
um, white blood cells can, they, they're an acute phase reactive. They can go up or down for any number of, of reasons. I'd rather them be low than high. Yeah, and so no, I mean, even a, a mild viral infection can make your white count low, any number of things. So the, the CDC, completely normal for all practical purposes. My hematocrit is really good. When I was and pregnant. And you used to have chronically low hematocrit. Yes, and did. so your red meat and your the chicken liver is really paying off. Let's see what it was when I was pregnant because it was low, but it, it had that was, it was 31, but it was lower than that. One so 38.8. 38. So you really fix that with your your red meat and your chicken liver. Uh, next is your lipid panel. All Look right. How fat. So this is Miss <laughs> Bacon, egg yolks, butter, brisket. So her total <laughs> cholesterol 168, which any anybody would say is a fantastic number. Uh, I actually wish it were a little higher. Her HDL is 63, which is very, very good. Her triglycerides are one of the best numbers I've ever seen, 36. Woohoo! Which is, that's an amazing number. <laughs> I got told just yesterday I posted how I ate five eggs for breakfast cooked in butter and this woman was like, you're going to have a heart attack. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, her LDL cholesterol, which is what the woman was alluding to, is 94. So even eating five egg, egg yolks at a setting with butter, her LDL is still 94. And when I eat meat, it's very fatty cuts of meat and they're always cooked in fat. So I'm just like yeah. bathing. So the fat. lesson in this is eating cholesterol, eating saturated fat in no way will, is going to increase your risk of a heart attack or stroke. And in many people, it doesn't even increase their cholesterol. But even if my LDL was high, would you be worried? No, not at all. No, no because you're eating a, a high fat diet and that's fine. But a lot of people still believe, and even though the American Heart Association is no longer saying that eating a diet high in cholesterol will raise your cholesterol. They're no longer saying eating a diet high in saturated fat will raise your cholesterol. A lot of doctors and other healthcare providers are still saying that foolishness. And so mm -hmm. I just think it's important to point that out. Your magnesium, 5.4, right in the middle of normal. Um, your reverse T3 was 12. Uh, which is right in the middle of normal. So you don't have any kind of a conversion problem from T4 to T3. It's just all your Hashimoto's. Uh, your vitamin D level was 52. It which, could be higher. But above 50 makes me very happy. And I'm breastfeeding, so I feel like, and tell me if I'm wrong, but would it be higher if I wasn't breastfeeding? Because yeah. is that not going into my milk? Absolutely. Milk? And since her vitamin D level is so high, She's actually making vitamin D for Beckett's. And there's there's research about this. A lot of people again don't know that. That if you're not if the mother's not eating any vitamin D, she's she's not giving any vitamin D to her baby at all. But by eating the vitamin D rich foods and taking your vitamin D, you've got plenty for you mm -hmm. and plenty for Beckett. The desired range, it says optimal is anything over thirty. Yeah. So I'm well. And that, I would say higher than that, but that's the official right. quest cut off. Um, C-peptide. Yeah, okay. C-peptide. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. First A1C. Oh, yeah. Hemoglobin A1C, 4.8. I'm pretty proud of these results, I mean, that's that, that tells you she's eating no carbohydrates to speak of. And when she does eat carbohydrates, they're locked up in fiber and dark green veg. No, I'm, I'm not pre-diabetic. I'm not mm -hmm. insulin resistant or anything like that. But my A1C was... 5.1 yep. I think before yep. so it has come down but that's never been an issue for me but I still keep an eye on it just to see where I am yep. and now her C peptide which gives us an indication of how hang how hard her pancreas is having to work to keep her blood sugar down is 0.97 which is on the lower end of normal which means that her pancreas this is this is just a cakewalk for her pancreas without the cake so the range is 0 0.8 to 3.85 and mine is 0.97. Yeah, yeah so, it's a beautiful it's number. It's really good. Yeah, so she's not having to produce any extra insulin in order to compensate for the very few amount of carbohydrates she's eating. Her pancreas is not having to work hard, which is good. Ferritin level is 17, which is within normal limits. Your fasting insulin was 3.8, which is very, very good. Again, an indication that she's not eating too many carbohydrates. Yeah, optimal is anything less than 19.6. Yeah, and I would say optimal is under 10, but that's what, say, yeah. really optimal Quest, is probably lower. Quest says under 20 is fine. Uh, her free T4, 1.2, which is right in the middle of normal. Her TSH, 1.39, again, uh, right in the middle of normal. No, I'm low normal. Yeah, low normal, but that, but for me, my range of normal is low anyway. So, yeah, yeah, so for a lot of people with Hashimoto's, 
TSH under two is where you want to keep it at. No. Um, mine has fluctuated during pregnancy. It went up a little bit. Where was it? It was 1.59. It was 1.59, 9. 5, 9, but before that, it was over two. Yeah. Because <clears throat> my fertility doctor was like, we really need to get this number way lower because for you yep. to have a healthy pregnancy, we need to keep yep. everything in the best range that we possibly can. Yeah. And so this TSH of 1.39 is without medication. And so right. most people with Hashimoto's, we try to keep their TSH under two with medication just to minimize symptoms. But with the diet she's currently eating, even with all the other, the sleep loss and everything else. And lack of exercise. <laughs> her TSH is still in the lower end of normal, which is, that's very good. And then her free T3, 3.1, which is also right in the middle of normal. I also want to point out that I do have breast implants and that also contributes to the TPO antibodies being elevated. And then some women, when they get them removed, they literally go all the way to zero. So that is something I am considering. I'm gonna do a video about that for because a lot of you have asked. So if I didn't have implants, maybe my antibodies would be even lower. I mean, I think they probably would be. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that they would. It's very likely that having a foreign body inserted into your body will confuse your immune system. You see how that kind That's of makes kind of science. Good sense. Now there's probably plenty of women who have breast implants have never had an issue. True. But they probably weren't uh susceptible to an autoimmune disease right. like because you have a family history yes. of Hashimoto's right. yeah so that's my labs guys let me know what you think in the comments um just give me some feedback <clears throat> on what you're doing with your Hashimoto's how it's going are you doing AIP are you doing keto are you doing carnivore how has it affected your labs or your symptoms because really symptoms I feel like are the top on the like hierarchy of importance yeah. symptoms are the most important thing because if i couldn't function and my numbers were normal like in the beginning then i wouldn't give a crap what my antibodies said yeah. because my symptoms had me down yeah. i could not even i barely could live life so keep that in mind when you're trying to work with your physician and <clears throat> or your nurse practitioner or whoever it is that you go to Make sure you're talking to them about your symptoms because it's very important. And don't let them discount your symptoms or ignore your symptoms and just look at the black and white lab results. Good job on your labs. Bad job on not informing your PCP that you stopped your medicine. You know, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry either, but you still, you lose a point. Your doctor is your health partner. And when you work this closely with your health partner, you kind of know what he's going to say anyways. Would you have told me no? No. No, no he wouldn't. I if would I say, had... let's keep close follow-up with labs, yes. which you did anyway. Which I did. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like I would have, if he wasn't my husband and I didn't know him and know what he was going to tell me, I would not have just went willy-nilly and went off my medications. I would have talked to him and said, look, I feel so good and I've actually missed some doses and I still feel fine. Talk to your provider. Do as I say, not as I do. <clears throat> Sorry, Dr. Berry. I forgive you. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Um, if you're interested in following my Hashimoto's journey, I'm going to be doing updates. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you get updates every time I upload a video. And hit that thumb button too and show me some love. Thanks for coming on my channel. Always a pleasure. See you next time. See you in the next one. Love you, mean it.